Hello and welcome back to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we're in the book of Ezekiel and we're looking at chapter 43 as we have started a um, Bible study from Ezekiel chapter 40 all the way to chapter 48, taking a look at the Old Testament building, house of the Lord, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see here. With our first chapter reading, which reflects on the reason why we're doing this, uh, Ezekiel 40 and verse 1. And actually, uh, verses 1 through 4. Okay, this is where Ezekiel is having a conversation with the Heavenly Father, and he tells him uh, in visions why he's having him go into the house of the Lord, okay, and measure, look at everything and measure everything within it. So he says here in uh, the 25th year of captivity, at the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year, after that the city was smitten. In the selfsame day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me here. And the visions of God brought me. He led me in the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain. Okay, and then um, as he brought me there, he beheld there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed or measuring rod. And he stood in the gate, and the man said unto me, Son of man, Behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thine heart upon all that I show you. For to the intent that I might show them unto you, are you brought here? Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Okay, so here we go uh, with chapter 43. And um, we're taking a look at how God establishes his house within his house of wisdom within his house, uh, the different structures. And so and then uh, chapter 40, we looked at the tables and, and we've done series uh, entitled Tables Are Turning, where we're talking about the heart. And now in chapter 43, he begins speaking of the glory because that also resonates inside of the house of the Lord. And so afterward, he says, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looks toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was, it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river of Kabar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. Okay, So we can see that the glory of the Lord is very much a part of the house of the Lord. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Okay, So the glory of the Lord, you will see, fills the house from within, and it's all around the house. So the Spirit took me up. Uh, okay, no, verse 6, he says, And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by. And he said unto me, Son of man, place the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings, by their whoredoms nor by their carcasses of their kings in their high places. For in their setting of their threshold by my thresholds and their posts of, by my posts and the wall between me and them and they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in my anger. <clears throat> now let them put away their whoredoms and the carcasses of their kings far from me and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Okay. And then he says, son of man, show the house of Israel. Okay, show to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. So show them the house, okay, this house that I have established, that I'm showing you, that I'm giving you 
uh, revelation of so that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern and if they be ashamed of all that they have done show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the comings in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them. For this is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. So behold, this is the law of the house for the house to be holy, okay? And for the house to have the glory. So we looked at how God is telling Ezekiel to show the house of Israel this house and how it stands with its glory, it stands as if it is holiness, and so that they can see and so that they may feel ashamed, just as with today, okay, uh, with an individual who has not been converted into the kingdom. Uh, God likes to make them jealous by uh, placing someone that is in the kingdom in their presence with the anointing, with giftings, so that they can... Uh, be ashamed, okay, of what they're, you know, what they may be doing that is not the same as the individual that has been converted in the kingdom that has the anointing, uh, that is walking in his will and, and manifesting his talents abroad through them, okay? And uh, so therefore, in that individual viewing that person that is in the kingdom, that has uh, the glory of God because they have confessed, they have come, they have come to the Heavenly Father, they have come to God and let them know that they are a sinner. They confess the fact that they're a sinner because that's what God is saying right here. In verse 10, he says, Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. Okay, that's what repentance is all about. It pertains to being ashamed of the wrong that you've done that was not right before the eyes of God. And then uh, once an individual confesses that, they are ashamed, they have remorse, and they uh, admit that to God, and they believe that Christ Jesus is the one who they need in order to save them from their sins, to be that covering that covers them, that covers uh, their sins from God, seeing them, okay, and they accept God as their personal Savior, okay, then they are converted into the kingdom. So by having that individual uh, that is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost manifests in front of an individual that is not saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, it will then make that person be able to see the difference in uh, their actual presence in the earth and then also will allow them to uh, know that there is a difference, okay? And being not in the kingdom, and then and the difference in being in the kingdom, because and then also having a relationship with God, because that's what it's all about: knowing our Creator, being a part of the kingdom that He has established for us to be a part of, and uh, then to know the will, purpose, and plan, destiny He has for us in our lives in the earth. Okay, so then going on. Uh, to verse 13, he says, and these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. Okay, so now he's going into explaining the altar. And he says, uh, the cubit is a cubit and the hand breadth. Even the bottom shall be a cubit and the breadth a cubit. And the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. And this shall be the higher place of the altar. Uh, and again, I'm going to skip around some void, uh, verses here. Verse 15, so the altar shall be shall have four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. So we see that there are four horns that will be attached to the altar, and the altar shall be 12 cubits long, 12 broad, square, and four squares thereof. And the settle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad and four squares thereof. Okay, and the border about it shall be half a cubit and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit abroad about and so he goes into again the measurements of and the width and what the pertainings to of the altar will be 
And then verse 18, he says, uh, and he said unto me, son of man, thus says the Lord God, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings on it and to sprinkle blood on it. And thou shalt give to the priests who are the Levites that be of the seed of Zedek, which approach unto me to minister unto me, says the Lord God, give them a young bullock for a sin offering. Now see how the priests uh, receive the offering to place on the altar. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it and on the four corners of it of the settle and upon the border all around it. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Okay, and that's where the cleansing and the purging of the altar. Now, this is the Old Testament. This is how the Levitical priesthood, how God operated through them in the Old Testament um, covenant, and which is extremely different from the New Testament because we can see Jesus Christ did all of this. Okay, he became the bloodshed, which purges all sins. There is no need for animals in our New Testament covenant that God has given us there because of the blood of Christ Jesus, human being blood, flesh, okay? So um, we see that difference taking place, but we also see just as he uses the Levitical priests the, from the Levi tribe, he uh, established the priests among that tribe. Well, with the New Testament, we all become priests and kings unto the God of heaven. And he tells us that in the book of Revelation, because we have to be able to offer up the offering of praise, the offering of sacrifice, our own individual selves. Okay, so God placed all of that within the New Testament uh, covenant agreement through Christ Jesus. And again, he tells us in the book of Revelation, in chapter 1, Verse 6, he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we see that we become kings and priests. And again, because you may be uh, called to operate as, a, well, we're all called to do that, operating as a priest. We become a royal priesthood. Okay, then you may be called to operate as a king where you are structured in, and of course, again, we're all called to do that because we all are supposed to be, uh, what is the word I want to use, leaders of the kingdom. Once you've been birthed into it, okay, you because you're a follower of Christ, and so then therefore you become uh, that leader, uh, leadership, just like Paul became a leader in the New Testament and went forward once he was converted. He became first a disciple of Christ. Uh, birthed into the kingdom, and then he became a leader going forward. Well, we were all called into that position also, okay? And the kings lead with authority and uh, then begin to uh, lead others, okay? Just as Christ Jesus, okay? Now, continuing on, so we're looking at the altar. He says, thou shalt take of the bullock, and so he goes into all of the different arrangements that goes forward <clears throat> with the purging of the blood around the altar and how the priests again were responsible for that and as today as stated we've become that priest also because we we become priests and kings unto God through our new covenant in Christ Jesus so verse 25 I'm skipping verses here Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of his flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. So we can see how the blood is what purges, cleanses, and purifies an individual. Once they've been covered in the blood of Christ Jesus, just like with the Old Testament consecration, with the animals that were being used, uh, we have today our New Testament with Christ Jesus purging. Then verse 27, and when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priest shall make you burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, says the Lord God. Just as with Christ, once we have been birthed into the kingdom of God by accepting Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that initial uh, ultimate sacrifice that has been placed on the altar, placed in the position to be 
a mediator uh, in altering our uncleanliness to cleanliness through Christ Jesus and the uh, resurrection and all that he did for uh, mankind and God placing him and making him that sacrificial offering for mankind. That's the same thing they did with the Old Testament, but only with the blood of animals. Okay, so but with our New Testament, we have the blood of the flesh of the human being, Christ Jesus, who was in the earth. And we have uh, the consecration of the heavens and the Holy Ghost that we are converted into. All right, so that continues uh, chapter 43 Bible study, taking a look at the structure and the ordinances of the house of the Lord, the material manifestation from the Old Testament point of view. All right, God bless you, God be with you, and I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.